I get compared a lot to this anime and manga series called Dr. Stone, and they totally ripped off my format of trying to rebuild society from scratch. The worst part is they started doing it two years before I did, but it's a fictional version of what I try to do on the channel of exploring the different technologies and how to build yourself up, starting from the Stone Age. But as a fictional series, it takes a lot of liberties, a few places here and there. Most of the things seem plausible, but in this video, I want to put to the test a few of the more far-fetched ones and see if there's any truth to them, and maybe I can learn something useful for some of our upcoming projects. One topic in this series I found especially interesting was when they try to make cotton candy. First off, it's just interesting because can you really make cotton candy with the kind of simple apparatus they constructed? And secondly, the real reason they build it is because they wanted to make wire. And wire is something we need a lot of as we start delving into more electronics. It seems like a good idea if it works, but I'm pretty skeptical just how realistically you can make wire using basically a cotton candy machine or a centrifuge of sort. So I wanted to put that to the test. First, we're gonna make some cotton candy. Then we're gonna try and make some wire. In the series, they use sugar crystals that are left over from some potato mirin that they had made previously. It's not something I've done before. However, I do have a fair amount of maple syrup. It just happens to be the middle of maple syrup season and it's hard to find a more readily available sugar source than the stuff that's flowing out of the trees in my own yard. So I wanna try and use this source to make my own cotton candy. But first I wanna make sure maple syrup is actually gonna work for this because not all sugars are made the same. Usually for cotton candy, you just use table sugar. Sometimes you have corn syrup and stuff mixed in it as well. Maple syrup is usually consumed as you know a syrup it actually can be turned into a sugar it's just a process of drying it out even further so I have some store-bought stuff we can test this with and if that works out we can start making our maple syrup and our own centrifuge definitely got some results it does appear to work it doesn't seem quite as good as a little bit more chunky a lot of it just spit as crystals out of it so it might be a little bit harder to actually uh, fluff it up as regular sugar it might be some value to mix in some of the white sugar i've made before with my maple syrup to get a better result but I, this is definitely cotton candy so i think we have success and uh, we can get started that's pretty good Once I tapped the four trees in my yard, I was able to get roughly four to five gallons of sap as the weather cycles between below and above freezing each day. Then each day's worth needs to be boiled down to roughly a pint of finished syrup. So I have a few jars of maple syrup here that have uh, been sitting around. We got a little uh, overly dried, and super saturated. So the sugar is now already starting to crystallize in it. So I'm gonna pour it all out on this tray, let it fully finish drying out, and we'll just have a solid crystal we can then use for making the cotton candy. But I got pretty thick, and I think this will be close enough to actually work. Just to improve the results, I might wanna add some white sugar that we made last time out of sugar beets and uh, get something a little bit more promising. But I think now we can move on to the next step of building the centrifuge. Another interesting method used in Dr. Stone's series is how they cast a centrifuge itself. Casting in an open mold, quickly pressing with a bamboo log from above, and then piercing the holes while it's still hot. This method probably works really well in an industrial factory where all these steps can be done super quickly with machines, but I suspect it's going to cool way too quickly to effectively work. But let's give it a shot and see if it works at all. Oh. Yeah, that was smash. <laughs> yeah, we're in PPE. That was scary. All right, so here's the end result of that little experiment. It's a very fun explosion of molten metal. I guess I was wrong. It does actually stay liquid long enough to push it around. If had I dropped it a little bit more gently, it might have turned out a little bit better, but I definitely don't want to do it again because I was yeah, way too hazardous though, I think. I think it's just a lot easier to do it the old fashioned way and make the wax mold and use plaster or sand to actually cast into and you just get the whole thing with one pour. So let's do that instead. 
But first, thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. If you feel like you need to speak to someone or you just need a mental health check-in, BetterHelp is an amazing online resource that allows you to do just that. It's an online therapeutic resource that sets your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, all from the comfort of your home. People often forget that mental health is just as important as physical health. I know I do. To get started, head to betterhelp.com slash htme, answer a few questions about your state of mind, and before you know it, you'll be matched with a licensed therapist who will work with you. It takes about as much effort as watching a YouTube video to start your connection to BetterHelp. BetterHelp is about facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists as needed. Head to betterhelp.com slash htme to answer a few questions and get paired up with a therapist. Oh yeah, and you'll also get 10% off your first month when you click that link below. to help consistently spin the centrifuge in the series they make a basic gearbox to help make spinning it easy and consistent. I'm not sure why they didn't put a nice crank on it, but we can replicate that and make some improvements too. Did a little bit of tweaking to get things to really line up well. Might still need a little bit of tweaking, but for the most part, it seems to work now. So your normal store-bought cotton candy machine spins at about 3,000 RPMs, which is gonna be pretty fast. I don't know if this guy can keep up with it, but with the gear system, we'll get a bit more of a spin per turn. Let's we'll see if we can make it work with a hand crank. All right, so we have the sugar all melted down. Now it's just a matter of pouring it into our little crucible here, but we'll see how well it actually forms cotton candy. So for most of it, it looks like it just kind of clogged up. The sugar really either got too cold too quick and clogged it or wasn't spinning fast enough to actually get it out. But it did make small quantities of candy floss. So that, I'm actually kind of impressed it did that much even. I think if I preheat the actual centrifuge, it might work a little bit better. I think it's just the copper sucks the heat out so quickly that it cools before it can make it to the holes. Also really challenging to both pour and spin at the same time, but I think in theory we've proven that it, this does actually work. The wind just got it. Oh man. <laughs> All right, so did a few tests. Preheating the crucible using a powered drill and uh, still not the greatest result. You kind of got a little cobwebby at the bottom here. Um, and it's all stringy as it shot out. Part of it might be that it's overheating and caramelizing because I'm not able to do it just the right temperature. Trying to make my own cotton candy machines is not really working out too well. Next is kind of the real questionable part of trying to actually make a wire by casting metal through the holes in the centrifuge. I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna work. I can't find any references of this being done commercially at any scale. So I'm highly skeptical of this, but in theory, it seems like it should work. In the past, I've done a video on trying to make my own wire and use gold we collected in California and then went through the whole process of trying to draw it into a long wire. Gold is one of the most ductible materials and theoretically, the smaller piece that we got could have been stretched for miles. But actually doing that was a lot harder than I expected and ended up with a fairly short length of wire that I wasn't really sure what exactly I could do with. So I ended up building this small little house for uh, William Osmond and use that as kind of electrical wiring in it. Not really sure what happened to that house. But anyways, I know from experience that drawing wire is pretty tedious and a bit difficult. So if this is a way to actually make wire that works, that'll be really impressive. So in it, they use gold. The quantities they use are really impressive because we're talking probably millions of dollars worth of gold that they're using to make the wire. And I'd love to be able to test that, but even like a half cup of liquid gold would 
be well over $100,000. So I'm gonna try a few cheaper metals. Metals with lower melting points will probably be easier to try with that. So I think I'm gonna start first on the lower end of the spectrum with tin. Even with preheating the crucible, the holes seem to clog pretty quickly, with just a few beads of liquid metal making it out. Unfortunately, each attempt damaged and threw the centrifuge out of alignment, so the results got worse and worse with each attempt, although I'm not sure it made much difference in the end. I tried putting together something a little bit better to try it with, but I had trouble getting that to be stable. But then I figured I already bought a cotton candy machine, let's just test this myth out for real with the actual machine. There's no way this isn't a bad idea. Here we go. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Consistent with my other results, it only ended up shooting out small pellets of metal before everything bursted into flames. I think this idea is pretty well busted. So as I kind of expected, the casting with the cotton candy machine was a little bit far-fetched for the series, but they do also make wire one other way, which is a little bit more straightforward, and that's using a wood mold to just kind of pour it along. I've always thought using wood as a mold like they do in the series is a little weird. One of the like number one safety concerns with casting metals is moisture. If your sand or your wood or anything that has too much moisture, you have a possibility of it just instantly being turned into steam and that basically shooting metal into your face. It's also more difficult to carve because you gotta deal with the grain as you kind of carve a channel for it where really the, the best solution is just sand, just some dry dirt, just drag your finger through it and you can make a pretty easy wire. But we're gonna try it like the series. They do it with a board and they just carve a basic zigzag channel and then uh, pour the copper into it. Let's at least see if we can get a wire using this method. So casting into wood ended up working even worse than I expected. I think what we might be seeing here is the Leiden frost effect where the board had just enough moisture in it to form a vapor layer, causing the bronze to pretty much just float right on off of it. I also tried casting into sand and then actual casting sand to see if I could get better results. But it's a challenge to pour at a consistent rate down the wire without it getting thick in spots along the way. So unfortunately, none of these methods seem to really work too great for making a really nice wire. This looks almost more like cat turds, to be honest. This one in the casting sand is a little bit better, but still, not the greatest wire, hard to move around and everything. Not the best result. The centrifuge method seems like it should work in theory, but I think there's just a lot of things working against you. Both kind of the characteristics of metal itself tends to not really be gooey or sticky and want to stay together like sugar does. But I was curious about trying a little bit more and I tried simplifying it a little bit. Instead of having a complex centrifuge, I just had a little metal container and put a hole in it and then heated it up and poured the molten metal into it. I used tin to test it. And the first time I did that, it seemed to just kind of spitter out and not really work too well. So then I took some inspiration from laminar flow water where you just try and get all the water flowing without any turbulence. So I put a little tube at the end of the, the bucket and heated that, but as it hit the water and cooled rapidly, it still broke apart. But I did get like some little bits that are wire-like. This is a lot more promising than anything else I've tried so far. So that method might have some promise and maybe worth experimenting with some more. But I think in the end, I've kind of disproven a lot of things that happened in Dr. Stone. I think the most interesting thing that I actually built out of this is the, the gearing here. This set is gonna have a lot of different uses, I think. Uh, it worked okay for the centrifuge, really needs to go even faster, I think. It'll be interesting to see what I can put this to use for. But after this, I have another Dr. Stone video I'm working on that's a little bit more promising to actually be a little bit more useful just because I was at the stage of wanting to do it anyways and that's making a lead acid battery and then connecting it to some form of generator. So that video should be coming up pretty soon. Thank you again to all of our supporters on Patreon. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.